Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Healthy Hong Kong. We posted the results of our nine months body check biomarkers last month. In this video, we will focus on talking about our nine months overall outcomes, including revealing the results of my third biological age test. The nine month period ended at the end of July. First, a disclaimer. We're just sharing our experience and the protocols we are using in our anti-aging journey. This video does not provide any medical advice. After viewing videos and reading the book Lifespan by Dr. David Sinclair, we started our NMN and resveratrol trial last year. Other than anecdotal feelings and measurements, we are tracking our progress with epigenetic clock tests to measure our biological age. Let me explain briefly why we chose epigenetic age as a marker. As you may be aware, in September last year, there was big news in the aging field when a clinical trial demonstrated for the first time in humans that it is possible to reverse aging as measured by the epigenetic clock. The trial was aimed at testing if a growth hormone and drug combination could be safely used in humans to restore thymic function lost due to aging. The trial also used epigenetic clocks to measure the progress of the participants with the result that they reduced their biological age by an average of 2.5 years. The epigenetic clock works by examining the methylation markers on the DNA. These markers alter gene expression and change in a predictable way throughout a person's life, and so can be reliably used to estimate a person's biological age. Some people are epigenetically older or younger than their chronological age, which means that they age faster or slower, respectively. Therefore, the epigenetic clock is ideal for measuring changes in biological age in order to test interventions that target the aging process. And as in our recent conversation with Dr. Kennedy, this is probably the most accurate of the biological clocks currently available. So far, I've taken three epigenetic clock tests during my nine months trial. I've just got my third biological result back. Here is my first result in January this year, where my chronological age was 58 and my epigenetic age was 50. I was happy with this result as my biological age was eight years less than my chronological age. I then took another test at the end of April, four months later. Here my biological age was 44.93, which shows my biological clock had turned back about five years. And then finally, I took another test after my three months NMN sublingual trial at the end of July, which gave my age as 44.96. This is an increase of 0.03 years, or approximately 10 days. I guess it was not too bad to get only 10 days older in three months. In summary, at our NMN trial nine months mark, according to the epigenetic clock test result, my biological age is 14 years younger than my real age. Also, it was reversed five years during the NMN trial. Frankly speaking, this was a bit of a surprise to us, as we did expect it will take longer, maybe over a couple of years, to see the results of the anti-aging supplement. My wife also took the second test, but there was a problem with her saliva sample. This nine months report was already overdue, so we decided to provide an update on her result in a later video. Here is a summary of the supplements that we've been taking over the nine months. Please note that the supplement and the dosage we discuss here is up to the nine months mark of our trial, which ended at the end of July. We started taking only 150 mg of NMN, but have increased the dose over time, and before the end of the nine months, we were both on one gram. For the first six months, we were using powder and capsules. For the next six, three months, we were taking sublingual lozenges. We take this in the morning on an empty stomach with water. We also take one gram of resveratrol. This comes in a capsule, but we empty the powder into a spoonful of olive oil. We do this per the recommendation of Dr. Sinclair that resveratrol is absorbed better by the body when it's dissolved in fat. We have chosen olive oil over yogurt as it A has no sugar so it will not break our fast and B it contains oleic acid, a monounsaturated fat that is a CERT1 activator. We are taking transresveratrol, which has added organic quercetin and piperin. The reason for the inclusion of piperin is that it has been shown in this study to increase the bioavailability of resveratrol. They found that the degree of exposure to resveratrol was enhanced by 229% and the maximum concentration in the blood was increased by 1544% with the addition of piperin. 
TMG is important to provide methyl groups to ensure that the processing of NMN in the liver does not deplete our methyl pool. We are also taking D2K3 for a number of benefits, including immune support and bone growth. At the moment, when it is difficult to get outside and get sufficient sunlight, it is especially important to keep up the levels of vitamin D. Vitamin C is to boost the immune system, and in taking ALA or alpha-lipoic acid, we are following Dr. Sinclair. We recently released a video talking about why we take this supplement, which you can find on our channel. We were taking vitamin A daily, but we have switched to taking it weekly as it is a fat-soluble vitamin which can build up to excess in the body. For our updated supplement regimens and brands we are using, please refer to our description. We are happy with and will continue to use the brands that we have been using as they have shown good results in our trial so far. Let's have a look at our body measurements. First to note that we changed our scales at home and they seem to measure some things differently, particularly fat and muscle mass percent, so some of the changes are due to this. I will not go through the results in detail, but to highlight a couple of points. I have reduced my weight by 4.3 kilograms from 68 to around 63. This is a bit of a surprise to me as during COVID-19 I am eating more and getting less exercise than normal. My wife has lost 2.5 kilograms in the nine months. She has also been eating more, especially protein, to try to increase muscle mass during COVID-19. She has not intended to lose weight as she is already underweight. We think both of our changes could be a side effect of taking the supplement. And now our blood markers, which we had checked a couple of months ago. You can see the results here. We did cover these in the previous video, so I will not go into them in detail here, but to summarize some of the key points. NMN is a form of vitamin B3. According to the Mayo Clinic in the US, prescription B3 is used to increase HDL cholesterol that helps to remove LDL from your bloodstream. My wife seems to have benefited from this as she has increased her HDL by 25% and decreased her LDL by 24% in the nine month period since starting with NMN. Another of the benefits of B3 is that it can lower the triglycerides by 20 to 50%. Again, my wife has seen a big improvement, a 50% drop in triglycerides, which may be from this effect. Let me briefly explain some background of our lifestyle, starting with diet. We have not made any major changes in our diet since starting NMN. We are on low carb, no sugar and no highly processed food. My wife did incorporate more protein into her diet as she is aiming to increase her muscle mass. Since the COVID-19 lockdown, which for Hong Kong was from February, we have been eating in more in general and increased our carb intake a little. We also practice time-restricted eating, typically 16-8 for myself and 12-12 for my wife. For exercise, before COVID-19 we ran and went to the gym once or twice per week. Since the lockdown we cannot go to the gym or even go running. Also it's more stressful as we're not able to go out at all. We did start a 7 minute exercise program at home to try to maintain our fitness. This was published in the American College of Sports Medicine as a very efficient all over body weight workout. We did see some possible effects of NMN before the lockdown. While taking NMN, we both reached our highest VO2 max score according to our Garmin watches, which for my wife was 51 and for me was 52. VO2 max refers to the maximum amount of oxygen you can utilize during exercise. It is linked to overall fitness and all-cause mortality, and having a higher VO2 max generally means that you are healthier. In February, we did a local 10K race close to home, and it was the first time that I won a trophy, and it was also my personal best time. As mentioned, with COVID-19, we have not been able to get down the gym or even go running. The restrictions are being lifted in Hong Kong and I have just started running again. My VO2 max is now 44. My wife went running only two times in June when the restrictions were temporarily lifted and still had a VO2 max of 49 at the time. I am going to take this as a challenge to see if with the help of NMN I can get back to 50 before the end of the year. Gyms are still closed due to COVID-19. When we can start going back again, we will figure out our 1RM and set targets for the end of the year. Now for eyesight. Based on testing at home, using an online randomly generated Snellen chart, I was previously 20-20, 20, 
but now I'm able to read the 2015 line. My wife was also 20, 20 and she now can read some of the 2015 line, so this does seem to be an improvement for both of us. I do not see any difference in my short distance vision though. For hair, we both found it seems to grow quicker than before, and my wife found she has more new growth hair. For turning grey hair back to dark, we don't see much progress within the first six months, but my wife did find that my hair has become a bit darker on the top. We think this is because the new growth hair is darker in colour. It should be noted that my hair was never very dark, so it's not that easy to tell. It's a pity that the hair on the side of my head is still completely grey. My wife only has a few grey hairs, but the new growth seems to be dark. We also found that our nails need to be cut more often. For wrinkles in our skin, we do think that there has not been any major changes. We do feel more energetic and especially notice this when we stop taking NMN. For example, when I'm not taking it, I get sleepy in the afternoon and normally have to snooze. An extra report from my wife. First, she has said that her period comes more regularly after taking NMN. And second, she used to feel super fatigued and have menstrual cramps during her period, but these symptoms have almost all gone after taking NMN for over four months. She's surprised and happy to see these changes. On the other hand, she has said it's a pity that the supplement seems not to alleviate her skin allergy, which she has had for the last two years before taking NMN. She was hoping that the supplements could in some way strengthen her immune system to help heal this allergy. In terms of mental factors, generally speaking, NMN seems not to have much effect, although we do feel that we have more enthusiasm in general. One last topic to cover for NMN and resveratrol is their storage. Dr. Sinclair said in his interview with Dr. Rhonda Patrick that NMN should be kept cool to stop it degrading into nicotinamide, which has been shown to inhibit sirtuins, the exact opposite of what we are trying to achieve with NMN. Tests by our supplier have shown that their product is stable at room temperature, but to be safe, we keep ours in the wine cellar. NMN also needs to be kept dry as it will degrade in the presence of water after one week. Transresveratrol is sensitive to light, which will cause it to degrade to the cis form. Therefore, it should be kept in a dark place. We also keep it in the wine cellar. Let's consider about the risks, since NMN has no long-term human trials at this point. In general, in my studies, the animals have suffered no adverse effects. With anti-aging treatments, which involve growth at the cellular level, there is the possibility of increasing the risk of cancer. Although no increase in cancer incidence, what has been observed in my studies, one concern is boosting NAD plus may help already established tumors to grow. In terms of human trials, so far, there has been a basic safety trial carried out by Keio University School of Medicine. This small trial involved 10 healthy men aged between 40 and 60 years old, orally taking small doses, 100, 250 or 500 milligrams of NMN. They concluded that NMN is considered safe at this dosage. There are two human clinical trials coming. One is from Washington University. This study is looking at the effects of NMN on key cardiovascular and metabolic functions, specifically those that are important risk factors for diabetes and cardiovascular disease. The other is from a Chinese NMN supplier for the first human clinical trial seeking to validate the anti-aging effects and safety of its NMN product. Next year I will be 60 and the risk of most chronic diseases including cancer and Alzheimer's increases greatly with age. So we are okay to take the risk. We would see it as taking control of our own health rather than waiting to get old and get one or several of the chronic diseases. Our ultimate goal is the same as that mentioned by Professor Barzilai in our interview, which is to extend our health span as long as possible, with the longevity being a welcome side effect. Thank you all for watching. This is our 9 months NMN resveratrol trial report. Still lots of space to improve, but overall we feel we are on the right track. There are different kinds of delivery methods of NMN in the market now. In the next video, we shall talk in more detail about our lozenge sublingual trial and our new start with different delivery methods of NMN, so please stay tuned. Please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for notifications of new releases. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.